old last week, what new things I found this week, and boy, did I find some good things. Let's get started. Hello again, friends, families, internet strangers. That's somebody else, but that's just funny. Um, my name is Steve Bailey. Tonight is the show. It is April 24th, 2023. Uh, we're going to start the show as we always do with things that sold for the previous week. Uh, I just got to remember what button to hit. Oh, this one. We got a lot of stuff to cover tonight, so I'm going to jump right in. I'm not going to do any interesting open dialogue, but uh, we've got some good stuff. Let's take a look. eBay sales for last week, 14 items totaling $811.62. This first item, by the way, um, as I say every week, this is really a visual podcast. I do my best to do an audio version. Uh, So if you're listening to the audio version, you're going to want to hop over to YouTube uh, and check out the video podcast, or I think Spotify has a video version. Um, But the show is really going to be video focused because you're going to want to see what I'm talking about. Uh, this first part of the show is, is teaching people how they can just find junk and sell it and make some money. Everyone wants money. No one wants more work. So this is a way where I can make more money without doing more work. I just live my life, find stuff, flip it, sell it and make some money. And that's what I've done here. Uh, this first item is an old lighter, uh, that I found, Again, cleaning up my mom's house. Uh, this was a, a lighter I guess my dad brought back from Japan. I don't know anything about lighters. Um, but uh, untested. Uh, sold it for $10 and they paid shipping. Uh, so that was basically $10 free because I was nothing into it. This next item is uh, the book that I bought at Goodwill probably about a month ago. Uh, I think it's a journal. Uh, it was brand new, still sealed in the package, so I'm not 100% sure. But this is Valley of Vision. A collector of Puritan prayers and devotions. Um, I bought it for a buck fifty. Uh, sold for twenty four ninety nine. Free shipping. So that was reasonable. Uh, next up, we had uh, Ghost Blade uh, for the Sega Dreamcast. This was part of the big video game lot that I bought back in July of last year. Uh, still have a few Dreamcast games left. This is one of them. Uh, Forty eight dollars fifty one cents on this one. Uh, I think that's free shipping, fifty-one fifty-four. So, does it show me here? I saw something pop up, but anyway, uh, forty-eight fifty-one on that one. I was into that probably about, I would guess, seven or eight bucks. Uh, so decent profit on that one. Uh, I talked about this one last week. Um, I well, actually I had three stacks of uh junk silver dimes. Uh, again. I'm not going to rehash this, uh, but this is a uh, this is a way where I can sell junk. I, I basically, I have uh, a certain amount of my portfolio in precious metals, but I don't have it in precious metals that someone else holds. I had literally have it in my house, in the safe, uh, things that I own, and I break it down into three categories. I have junk silver, I have uh, real silver, like silver eagles, brand new, uncirculated. And then I have gold coins and I'm trying to balance between the three different categories. So I set the dimes up for sale, the extra dimes that I had, um, and basically set the price where I wanted them. And then once they hit that price, people started buying them. Uh, so this stack of 50 dimes sold for $127 and 60 cents. Uh, that went towards my gold buying purchase because I need more gold than I've got silver. Um, so I have enough to get a gold coin, but unfortunately where I buy the gold coins from, Uh, have set a minimum buy limit on gold because apparently it's in high demand. So I have to wait till I can get two coins. So anyway, that was a long-winded saying, uh, way of saying I sold some junk silver. Um, Next up, we have another Christmas ornament. This is Frosty the Snowman uh, from the animated TV show uh, from Carlton Cards. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, Christmas ornaments uh, from the, the, the lot that I purchased Um, this one, I believe I was in for, uh, probably about two or $3, not a lot. Um, but sold for $15, uh, and free shipping. So probably about seven or eight bucks profit on that one. Uh, you saw this one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, maybe it was even last week. Uh, this was 
I went to uh, I went to the DMV to deal with some uh, some car related things. Uh, and again, this is an example of just lifestyle. Uh, this is a lifestyle business. While I'm at the DMV, when I'm done, I know there's a Goodwill right down the street. So I just pop into the Goodwill after I finish with the DMV. I find this DVD, The Princess and the Goblin, um, and they're selling it for 99 cents. Uh, and I bought it for 99 cents, sold it for $24.52. Again, I was already out and about. I just hopped into the Goodwill, spent about 15 minutes there, and that was it. Uh, here's another stack of uh, Roosevelt dimes. Again, the price was going up, uh, so I adjusted the price on these, made it a little bit higher. The other ones were 125 This is 141 uh, we won't go into that anymore. I think that was my last stack of dimes that I had to sell. Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. This is the PlayStation 3 version. Um, sold this for $11.30. I don't think this was part of my video game lot. I think this is something I'd been sitting on for a while. Uh, so happy to see that one go. Uh, next up we have the uh, Tommy Hilfiger Basset Hound Christmas Ornament from Macy's. Uh, again, part of the uh, Christmas ornament lot. This one I don't think I paid anything for uh, because my rule of thumb when I'm buying things is if it retails for less than $10, you can either keep it and do with it what you want or you can donate it uh, and then I just sell it. And the reason for that is very simple. Um, when you take off, set, so this one sold for $7, so they paid shipping, um, but by the time you take eBay fees off, I'm only about $5 profit into this. So, you know, it's not worth it for me to, to, to buy something that sells for $7 and pay the person 3 or $4 for it. It just cuts into the, too much of the profit. Uh, next up, we have Dream Dancer for the Nintendo DS. This is another filler game uh, that had just been sitting forever. Um, I probably should have donated it because when you're done here, uh, $8, I probably made 4 bucks. Uh, by the time shipping is done, if I'm lucky, uh, and I would have made six if I had donated it to a uh, charity or to a, a, a thrift store or something like that. So took a little bit of a loss on that, but you know what? It's okay. It's out and it's gone and it makes room for other stuff. Like this one, Printy 1 and 2 uh, for the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Brand new, still in the package. Uh, this was part of the big giant lot. Bought this uh, in July, sold for $138.59. Plus they paid shipping, $150, $150.20. Okay, this one is an interesting one. This is um, Kraken Dice. So this has probably been in my inventory for a year now. I went to Goodwill over a year ago, and they had a whole bunch of dice. Uh, and if you're, any, if you're any kind of a gamer, you know anything about Dungeons & Dragons or role-playing games, they have dice. And... People obsess over their dice. They will buy custom dice and heavy dice and painted dice and all kinds of stuff. Well, they had a giant, I would say it was probably four or 500 dice, uh, and they were selling them for like five bucks. So I bought them, and I learned a lot about dice by doing that. And I found out that apparently um, Kraken makes uh, very custom dice, and this one, OOP, is out of print. Um, this is a dice set called called absinthe i guess because of the color um so this had been sitting for a while i mean they're not very fast movers uh but they did sell 12 dice for 50 dollars uh free shipping next up we have the uh bo katan Kree's premium electronic helmet from hasbro the black series um i bought this from a wholesaler um i have a wholesale account with a, with, with a company and i bought a bunch of these because my daughter wanted one um, so I figure if I buy one, I'm going to buy several. Uh, so I bought, I think, three or four. Uh, and this is the last one to sell. Um, sold for $149.99, and they paid shipping $160.49. Finally, we've got uh, a Chilton repair manual. I bought a stack of these. I think it probably was last year. It wasn't the end of last year, but it was last year. I bought a stack of these at a yard sale. The guy was selling probably 15 or 20 of them. And he wanted 10 bucks for the stack. Well, I knew uh, I could get that $10 back. Um, so I wasn't worried at all. So I bought those. Uh, this one didn't sell for much. It was only $4.95. But I've sold others for significantly more than the 10 bucks that I paid. 
So this would sell $4.95, $8.60 with shipping. My rule of thumb is if it's less than $10 uh, and it's reasonably heavy, um, I'm going to charge you shipping. Uh, this was media mail, so it wasn't that bad. So I made probably a couple bucks on this one. Not a big deal. So that's everything that's sold. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to flip over to, uh, I put a YouTube video out uh, this week. Uh, yard sale season started back up. And this was, my son and I go out yard sailing every week during yard sale season. And our local area, we kind of have dried up a little bit. We know the people who are just having a yard sale every week. We know the people who are just selling uh, stuff they buy at Walmart. You can buy tons of, you know, detergent and things like that. So we know which ones to avoid. And it's it's kind of like it's getting repetitive and redundant. So we decided to branch out and go to a new town uh, near us. It's probably about 30 to 45 minutes away. Um, and boy, oh boy, did we find a lot of stuff. Now, I told you last week, because yard sales season is back in play, um, I'm not going to be doing as many of the, it'll be rare for me to do a live show and tell. Um, I'm going to start doing more pre-recorded stuff because I had a lot of inventory uh, from thrifting on Friday and yard sales on Saturday, uh, and I wanted to get it listed. Uh, so I started listing it right away, uh, but I made sure I recorded the video showing uh, what I got. So. We're going to break and we're going to show you that. I'm going to show you the pre-recorded footage of what I picked up on Friday thrifting uh, and what I picked up Saturday yard sailing. So let's take a look at that real quick. Hey there, everybody. It's Steve and you are looking at my pickups from yard sailing and thrifting for the week of April 24th, I think. Anyway, we're going to take a quick look at everything we got and explain to you how the deals came to be and why I did some of the things I did. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to start in no particular order. Um, I'll probably start, uh, since I did my thrifting on Friday and my yard sales on Saturday, I'll start over here on the right. Um, I show, I did a, a short on YouTube for these. Uh, these are Squishmallows, um, new with tags. Uh, picked them up for 99 cents a piece at Goodwill. Um, they sell for about 15, 16 dollars a piece, maybe 20. Um, there's an Eeyore. Um, I don't know the names of some of these, fortunately they write them on the tags. This is Eric. Apparently these are rare. And then, of course, you can never go wrong with uh, Grogu. The Grogu Swishmallow does, even in used condition, does $30 to $35 consistently. So also at the, uh, at the Goodwill, I picked up this book, uh, Teaching Yoga. Um, again, my process for books is I use Scout IQ. Uh, that tells me whether or not the book is worth selling on Amazon. Um, since I don't have a large Amazon lot going out this week, I also then scan it on eBay. Uh, this book gets about $10 to $11. Um, which, you know, since I pay a dollar for the book, I'm going to make three or four bucks. It's not a big deal. I simply put in a padded mail or put a label on it and I'm done. Um, I also found this. This is Ghost Stories. I'd never heard of this before, but it is sealed. It's a DVD sealed in the box. Um, this goes for about uh, $18 to $19, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, brand new uh, and sells pretty consistently. I paid, I was supposed to pay $3.99, but she charged me $4.99, so... Even still, when you put all of this together, uh, I spent $10.50. Um, so between all of this, I'll probably make 60 to 70 bucks uh, in profit. So that was thrifting on Friday. Yard sale season has officially started for us uh, here in the Northeast. Um, so we did our second yard sale week. Um, we kind of burned out our local area, so we went to another area uh, nearby to a couple of community sales, and this is what we picked up. Um, we picked up this lot over here of Skylanders and Xbox 360 games. Uh, I paid $20 for the whole lot. Now, there's not a lot of good titles in here. I basically did it for two reasons. Number one, I knew I had profit to work from, uh, from thrifting on Friday. Uh, and I wanted to help her out because she says, I just want the stuff gone. We'd originally agreed on $10 for the games, which... You know, maybe I can get $10 worth of value out of it. Um, but I mainly got it for the Skylanders. What I've done is I've got uh, previously, in a previous week, uh, I got a bunch of the portals uh, for the different games along with the game that they come with. Uh, so I'm trying to build the starter packs uh, for those minus the original boxes. So I'm hoping somewhere in this lot um, of Skylanders, I'll find those and then I can sell that. Individually, uh, the Skylanders don't sell for very much. Uh, the games and the portals really don't sell for a lot, but if I can bundle up an original starter set minus the box, 
I should be able to do 25 per starter set. Uh, so that would be 75 for the three. Plus it also came with uh, two strategy guides. Again, these were used by kids, so they're not in perfect condition. But again, people aren't buying these to collect. People are buying these to play. So I don't mind paying uh, a little bit more for a used book uh, just because that's what they're going to use it for anyway. Next up, we have this box. Um, this is a box of random stuff. Uh, you can see right there. And the reason I bought it, number one, it said make offer. So the first lady that came out um, said $20. And I'm like, no. Uh, so they hemmed and hauled about it for a little bit more. And then they came down to $5. So $5 for this box. Now, the main reason I bought it uh, was because if you remember a few weeks ago, uh, I got a bunch of G.I. Joe figures uh, for free. And basically, complete, in, complete figures like this or partial figures like just these legs. Um, the, believe it or not, even the partial figures do really well. So across this box, and it is just a hodgepodge of stuff. There's a few Star Wars figures in here from the 90s, uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, there's a few uh, you know, little green army men figures. So, I mean, it's, it's a hodgepodge of stuff. But I mainly got it for the G.I. Joe figures. I figured G.I. Joe figures, I made about 500 bucks uh, on that set of G.I. Joe stuff that I got for free a few weeks ago. So I figured there's got to be at least $5 worth of value in there. So I'm going to part that out, separate out all the legs, sell the legs separately, sell the torso separately, sell the completed figure separately. Uh, and I should be able to, to do really well on that. So the next yard sale we went to, uh, there was a guy that was in negotiation for PS3 and a bunch of games. They wanted $75 or best offer. Well, he was hemming and hawing. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I can do it. Let me go see if I can get some money out of the ATM. So they set it aside for him. And in the course of that conversation, I heard them say, do you like old retro games? I'm like, do you have any? She's like, yeah, we've got some old Nintendo games. So I said, okay, well, let's take a look. Now, again, nothing fantastic here. Nothing to write home about. Um, Tetris. Tecmo Super Bowl, Baseball Stars, Mario Duck Hunt. Um, again, nothing fantastic, but I wanted to keep the conversation going uh, to see if that kid ever did come back um, and to show her that I was serious. So I paid her $10 for that stack. That's $2.50 a game. Not terrible. Again, in my head, I'm processing all the profit that I've made prior to this transaction to see whether or not that makes sense. So I went ahead and gave her 10 bucks. I haven't heard back from her. If I do, I'll follow up with you and let you know. So that was that yard sale. And that kind of wrapped up the day, except for one that we saw on the way home, which we stopped at, which was a guy who buys storage sheds. So I'm hoping that his goal was get rid of the stuff and don't worry about the price. I found this game, River King, uh, for the PS2. It is complete in box. Uh, the disc is in really good shape, no damage to the disc. Um, Natsume makes good artwork, so I figured this was worth something. This sells for about 25 bucks. It's a, it's a terrible game, but it sells for about 25 bucks on eBay. So I went ahead and bought it, paid a dollar. Um, and then finally, they will always be the Redskins to me. I bought this uh, kind of um, Hoggett statuette, uh, Santa Claus, Hoggett, Redskins thing. Again, paid a dollar for this. This sells for about 50 bucks. Um, plus, they pay shipping. So I should be able to do really well on that. Hey guys, Future Steve here. Uh, I just want to let you know, I was sitting here editing this video when I noticed that one of the Hoggett's ears was broken off. Now, I didn't notice that when I bought it. I didn't notice it when I filmed it. I only noticed it when I went back and looked at the editing. So even though I showed you that this sells for about 50 bucks, uh, I'm probably only going to sell it for like 20 uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's broken, and I'll make sure that I advertise that it's broken. Number two, uh, I only paid a dollar. So if they're paying shipping and I get 20 bucks, I'm still making $15, $16 on top of the dollar that I spent. Uh, and it'll sell faster if it's significantly cheaper. So uh, even though I said 50, that's not what I'm going to sell it for just because of that defect. Anyway, I just want to let you guys know uh, I'm not being deceptive. I'm simply not observant when I'm buying. I get excited. I see something for a dollar. I see it sells for 50. I don't give it the hairy eyeball that I should sometimes. Anyway, that's it. Just wanted to let you know that I saw that so I don't get comments telling me you missed this. Anyway, back to the video. So this is 
everything that I got from today. Um, let me know what you think. Did I do good? Did I do bad? I don't want to hear any comments, although I'll probably get them about I took advantage of people. Everybody here set the price. Um, I did not come up with any prices. Uh, so what they offered, it, what they wanted is what they got for the most part. I mean, this, I told them no at 20. They came down to five. I didn't say five. They said five. So I bought it. Um, but that's it. Yeah, so that's a recap. Um, let me know what you guys think. Is that okay that I keep doing that, pre-recording that? Because the fun fact is, and, and one of the reasons I wanted to show you that was because uh, I didn't record this, but I thought about it. The very next night, I sat down with that box of G.I. Joe stuff, and I kind of went through a process to figure out what how I'm going to do and what I'm going to do. So what I did was I sat down with the wife. We're watching television. And I'm just sorting it. I'm like, if it's a G.I. Joe complete figure, it's going here. If it's a G.I. Joe parts, it's going here. If it's something else random, it's going here. And so I basically kind of organized it that way. And what I came up with was a collection of two or three, wasn't many, uh, complete G.I. Joe figures. And a whole bunch of broken parts. I think it was like 20-ish torsos and cod pieces and legs. Uh, and then a whole bunch of accessories. Now, I collected Star Wars figures as a kid. I know the first thing you're going to lose uh, are the accessories that go with the figure. So believe it or not, the accessories are sometimes just as valuable as the figures for people who want to have a complete collection. So the reason I share this with you is I want to show you real quick. Uh, I, I, I put up a YouTube short. If you're not following me on YouTube, you should go follow me on YouTube. Steve-Bailey.com slash YouTube. Uh, because I usually put little short videos up the day of yard sailing. Uh, and I put a video up sh showing that here's what's in the box. I paid $5. Did I do good or did I do bad? Well, let's take a look at some things. This right here, and you'll see this again next week, but I just want to show you as an example. This right here is one of the figures uh, that I found in that box uh, that sold. And you'll see it sold for $29.99. I kind of give you a little bit more of a broke breakdown here. Um, 28, 25, 66, the glasses are getting fuzzy. Um, 25, 66 is what I walked away with, uh, on that sale. Uh, and that was just one figure. Check this one out. These are the accessories, uh, that I found. It's a whole bunch of swords and weapons and things like that that go with the figures. Uh, sold this for $50. Uh, and I believe, yeah, it was free shipping. So I made forty three fifty two, but then I had to pay shipping. So it's still, let's say, let's say conservative thirty five dollars. Okay, so the thirty five dollars plus the twenty dollars, uh, I'm already fifty five dollars. I'm fifty bucks up on that lot because I paid five dollars. And then I took all the body parts because people love to repair GI Joes. Put that up for a hundred dollars. Uh, again, free shipping as well. Trying to move it quickly. Uh, sold that one as well for $86.76. It was $100, but I walked away with eighty-six seventy, and then I had to pay shipping. So let's say 80 bucks. So I'm up $130 already, uh, and I haven't even gone through everything. There's still Star Wars figures in there. There's other figures in there. Uh, I don't know if the little green army men are going to do anything or not, but we're certainly going to find out. There were a few Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels cars in there. So... All in all, it was a $5 uh, buy, and, and I'm up 130 already. So if you think something, the best advice I can give you is this. If you're out yard, number one, if you're not yard sailing, I don't know what you're doing because there's so much potential out there. Uh, I could, I'm working on a video right now where I took a $1 bill, and I'm going to show you how I turned it into $100. Literally $1 bill. Uh, now it requires buying something and flipping it and taking the money and flipping it again and so on and so forth. But there's so much potential out there in yard sailing. People should never be complaining that they don't have enough money to live the life that they want because all they have to do is put in a little bit of work. Yes, you have to get up early on a Saturday morning. Yes, you have to spend the time to clean it and test it and list it. But when you can walk away, I mean, you've, you, if you've been following this podcast for the past few weeks, you know that every week it's consistently $500 a week, $600 a week, $800 a week. Uh, and I'm not doing anything. I've got, I'm good. When I'm done with this podcast, I've got four or five things out there. And now I'm going to ship. That's going to take me 15 minutes. So it took me about 15 minutes to list, 15 minutes to ship. 
So 30 minutes, uh, you know, is all it's going to take me on a daily basis. Uh, so get out there and do the yard sale hustle. And if you find a big giant lot of something, the best thing to do, look for something that you're interested in. Obviously, if I saw a big giant lot of uh, mason jars, I'm not going to be interested in that. But toys interest me. So whether it was G.I. Joe, now the fact that I had G.I. Joe before, I knew that it was going to be something. But even if I didn't know anything about it, I would have probably still bought that. That's why I bought that tarp last year for $10. Because I knew buried in there somewhere was money. Uh, so I get to go through and look for it and find it. It's like a treasure hunt. Um, and I think I'm doing pretty well uh, with the money that I made from uh, the $5 sale. So... And there's other stuff. We'll talk about that next week. I don't want to give away next week's show too early. But that's it. Um, that's all I got for this week. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it valuable. Uh, we are starting to get some traction and some following. So please tell people about us. We'd love to have people come out here. I'd love to help people uh, figure out how to do this on their own. And reach out to me, either YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Uh, let me know what you find. Let me know what, uh, what stuff gets you excited. I'd love to help you get started too. Anyway, that's it. I've all I've got for tonight. Thanks a lot, guys. I will talk to you next week. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Steve Bailey Show. Please make sure to check out Steve on all his social media platforms. 